In this video, we're going to enter an invoice and match it to a purchase order. In order for us to do that, we need to log in to the payables um, responsibility and then we're going to select invoices, entry and invoices. In the invoice workbench, we enter the type which is a standard invoice and then we enter the purchase order which has been entered or given to us by the uh, by the supplier so the purchase order number is 6169 in this example and that should automatically enter the details of the supplier and supplier site as on the purchase order we then enter the invoice date. The invoice date is today, which is the 13th of March. Click on OK. And then we enter the invoice number that is given to us um, on the supplier invoice. So I'm going to just make one up. I'm just going to call it COR-1001. And then we'll enter the invoice amount, which is 534.5. Five zero that includes the taxes, and there's some additional information that can be entered at the header level. For example, you've got the GL date, payment currency, payment rate type, distribution, um, purchase order. So we're going to match this to purchase order, and also project information, and all this could default in from the purchase order details. Next, I'm going to click on the match button, which allows us to match the invoice to the purchase order. I could actually do a quick match, which will very quickly match details that I've got. So I just want to go through match so that you'll be able to find out, you'll be able to see how the matching is actually done. Click on match, and then click on find. And we just want to match to one of the items on the purchase order, which is the DVD burner, which we have DVD burner eight speed. So if I click on match, so if I click on calculate tax, that calculates the tax element, and then it adds the tax to the invoice. And you can now see that the invoice now matches. Um, to the purchase order details including tax information. So there's some tabs at the top here. Um, the general tab gives us the general information about the purchase order uh, and matching to the actual invoice. And you can see that the status is actually never validate never validated, which will show I'll show you how to validate the invoice in a few minutes. And then you can see that approval is also required for this invoice. So invoice approval has actually been switched on for this um, for this instance. On the lines, you can see information about the lines, the tax information, PO number, and some additional information on distributions and how the tax has actually been built for us by the system. You can see additional information like the tax rate and the tax jurisdiction. And then if there's any holds on the invoice, holds on invoices can be viewed here. Um, the different types of holds you have are system holds and also holds that you could actually um, that could be that you could actually place on manually. You can also view payment information and scheduled payments um, if you have payments that are scheduled to be run at a particular uh, date and time. And you can also preview some, um, have a look at some prepayment that could be applied uh, based upon a supplier being prepaid. Once you're happy with the information, you then need to validate. You click on the actions button and then you select the validate checkbox and click on OK. And that actually validates the invoice and you can see that the status has now changed changed to, to, to validated and uh, for the purpose of demonstration I'll just go in and I'll force the approval um, by clicking on force approval and that will make the 
make the invoice to be approved. So if I click on OK, that forces the approval and you've got manually approved. What should normally happen is that this should be routed to an approver who would then approve the invoice and would not need to go through this uh, manual approval that I've just demonstrated here. Other things that you could do is that you could generate the accounting just to view the accounting transactions that has been generated by this invoice. If I go to actions and select create accounting and click on OK, that creates the accounting transaction and all the um, examples of the different accounting transactions the debits and the credits just for you to view it before you actually do the final posting to General Ledger. So if I go to Tools, View Accounting Events, I should be able to view the accounting events um, via, the, via the HTML form. So, so in the HTML form, you're able to see the accounting events. Uh, you can see that the invoice is validated, the event status is draft accounted, so we just want to see what the accounting um, so on and if I click on view journal entries I'll be able to see the journal entries for this invoice so if I scroll down I'll be able to see the item expense which is debited the non-recoverable tax element of it and also postings into the liability account so once the payment is made the liability account will be reversed and then you'll have the um, account and transaction correctly rep represented um, in the in the accounts between uh, the cash account or the bank account and the liability account. So that's just a representation of the intended account and transactions on this uh, invoice. From the invoice workbench, I'm now going to pay the invoice in full, I go to actions, select pay in full, and then I'm going to click on OK. Then I'm going to enter some details about the payment details. So I'm going to choose a payment method of check. So I'm going to select check as a payment method. And then I'm going to enter the payment date, which is today's date, 13th of March. Payment method. I'm going to select the payment method of check. And then I'm going to select the bank account. bank account I'm going to use will be my Bank of America click on OK once I'm happy with the details details being payment date Bank of America 204 payment method I need to change this back to check Then I've got my payment process profile, which I need to enter. Check US dollars. And then that brings it back to my document, which is going to be check 204. And then I've got my next document number printed. Once I've entered all the details, I'm going to click on actions. And then select the create accounting. And then I also want to print the remittance. It's a specific program that it wants to use, which is separate remittance advice. And then I'm going to click on OK. And that submits a request to generate the transactions and also all the accounting information as well.
I can go into my view request to view the current details of the payment click on find and we can see that the payment instructions and the format has been done so if I click on my format payment instructions view output I can now see a copy of the check this is a copy of the check going out to corporate express office supply and with all the details of the information going on the check so from this screen I can also which is the payment screen I can also view the payment overview which gives me some information as to how it was paid it was paid by check it's given me the process ID it's given me the bank details of where it was paid from um, bank account process method and also other information as to who the payee is and also the invoice details I can also drill from here and look at some other information like the invoice overview bank details of the um, bank details of the supplier and also information about supply and all the payments information as well.